Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Business 119 and our next unit is called Effective Business Writing. I want to make sure that you are aware we have a lot of chapters to do in this unit. Chapters 6, 7, and 8. In addition, don't forget you are required to do the writing tutorial. So remember, you can always access the quizzes directly from here. Each of them is worth 10 points, including the writing tutorial. Or you can go ahead and launch your ebook and access the quizzes and the tutorial that way. I want to emphasize that the chapters include a lot of writing examples and strategies that will be really helpful to you for this assignment. So I recommend that you allow yourself a little bit of extra time to do the chapters and pay attention to the templates and the examples in the text. Our assignment is going to be creating a business portfolio. And you have a little bit of leeway or flexibility with this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the assignment down here. And what you're looking at now are two different options for creating your portfolio, option A or option B. And you only, again, ignore my due dates. Sometimes I, I this is an all-purpose video, and so if your due dates don't exactly match, that's fine. In your own Canvas shell, you will see your correct due dates, all right? Um, but you have a choice of option A or option B. Choose one. You need to do one or the other. And option A is essentially a continuation of the job analysis and the resume that you created in our last unit. I'm assuming for option A that you're going to be working for somebody else. And so in that previous unit, the job analysis unit, you identified a company and a job. And now I want what I want you to do is I want you to identify a specific individual within that same company, make sure it's a real person, and you're going to write a cover letter directly to that person. Now, option A and option B include several distinct pieces of writing, and each of them will take different forms. And again, this is where the textbook will be very helpful to you. So a cover letter has a very specific strategy and format. It's essentially a direct request. You're asking to be considered for a position. So remember, choose a real person within the company and write a letter of request, a cover letter. The second piece of communication for option A is a memo. Now, memos are formatted differently from cover letters. So again, look at the templates and the examples in the, in the chapters that you have coming due. In the memo, I want you to create what's called a SWOT analysis. And SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And so in the memo, you're probably going to create a little bit of a chart or table showing what is positive about the company, how can the company improve, what are some opportunities for growth, what are some threats perhaps from the economy or from competition that that company might be facing. So in other words, you already started in your last um, report, you already started to look at the company, and now I want you to take a deeper dive into their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The reason for this is because when you ask for a position, your request will be stronger if you can say, and this is part of your strategy, I have the strengths that can help you take advantage of opportunities and overcome your weaknesses. You want to pair those things. And then the final piece that you're going to, to do for option A is a PowerPoint, essentially a branding portfolio. Now this is different from the simple branding exercise we did when you simply packaged your brand as a brochure. What I want you to do now is take, again, a more detailed look at your brand, very specifically how you can help the company in terms of their SWOT analysis. And so your brand is now very specifically saying, these are my strengths and I'm helping you overcome your weaknesses. 
package your new brand, your more detailed brand, as a PowerPoint or a slideshow, all of this is now part of your option A portfolio. So the letter, the memo, the PowerPoint branding portfolio. You're going to upload this into Canvas. You can upload it together or you can upload each individual piece. Either is, either is acceptable. That's option A. Option B is assuming that you want to work for yourself. And so we're going to take a more entrepreneurial approach in option B. You're going to do also a letter of request, but in this case, your target audience, and again, it has to be a real person, is a potential investor. Don't just write a letter to some anonymous dear investor. I'll take points off for that. Go out into the business world, assuming that you have a real business idea. It can be hypothetical. You don't have to actually launch the business, but assuming that you have a business idea, who's the most likely potential investor that really exists? Do a little homework about them. Find out why they would be a good bet to invest in your idea. Write a letter to them. And so this is going to be a request for resources. You're also going to write in, in, in option B, two different memos. So again, look at the chapter, look at the strategies and the structures for writing letters and memos. They have different formats. In the internal memo, you're writing to your own individual team. We're going to assume you get the money, and now you have to tell your team, here's what your tasks and responsibilities are. And again, you'll notice that I'm asking you to create a table or a chart. Your second memo for option B is bad news. Oftentimes things happen. Maybe there's a delay in the supply chain. You can't get a shipment of materials. You're behind schedule. There's a very specific strategy for writing bad news. And I want you to craft a memo back to the same investor saying, now there's some bad news. So the content of the memo in your, in your bad news memo is going back to the investor. For your final piece of communication in option B, you're going to write a press release. Now, the textbook doesn't have great examples of press releases, but I'll show you in a moment. I've given you some links in our tips page for where you can find examples of press releases. One more, one more thing. So again, option A or option B, pick one or the other. Your actual due dates will be in your own Canvas shell. Um, one more question that people often have, if you pick option A, the memo that you're writing will be addressed to the same individual as the cover letter. So in option A, the cover letter and the memo are going to the same person. In option B, the request for resources is going to an investor. The bad news memo is going to that same investor the internal memo will be going to your own team. So pay attention to target audience for each of these. Let's go back out here to our Canvas homepage. So again, we're looking at the effective business writing, and this is your tips page here, writing strategies. And what you'll notice is that I've given you a link here. If you're writing a press release, you will find some very good examples of how to format a press release. A press release has a very specific format. All right. So those are your tasks for the effective business writing unit. And take some time. Identify which option you want. Pick the one that's best for you look at the writing strategies, do the chapters, and then let me know if you have any further questions. I look forward to seeing your work.